My name is Jack. I work as a salesperson. I design things. I like to do a lot of things. I pay tons of taxes. I think that we that have money should be able to spend it any way we want to. The government should realize that we are entitled to do whatever we want as long as we don't hurt anybody else. During a battle for a nameless hill a few miles from the China border. The Chinese when I come home, I like to relax. I smoke a substance that for some reason or another makes life easier. On the street, it can be called anything. Cannabinol, Cal, Wacko, Sherman's, PCP. I prefer to call it angel dust. The long-range artillery sometimes strikes well beyond the front lines. The stories today about PCP relate to the stories in the old about marijuana or cocaine. Here is an example. A 16-year-old lad apprehended in the act of staging a holdup. 16 years old and a marijuana addict. Here is a most tragic case. Yes, I remember. Just a young boy. Under the influence of the drug, he killed his entire family with an axe. I'm afraid this clip from Reefer Madness is just that, madness, compared to what we know today are the real facts about marijuana. But one of the things that's of concern to me is that I'm afraid that many people may think that this whole thing about PCP will be just another big scare tactic like uh, was portrayed in Reefer Madness. It definitely can kill people. Now, the way it normally kills people is primarily by three or four different mechanisms. The most common one is, is that people get so intoxicated on this drug because it is so powerful that they have an accident. I was under the influence of PCP, and I hit an old couple, an elderly couple. A second way they've been killing themselves is that there is something about this drug that really unleashes inhibitions, particularly as it relates to violent tendencies. This uh, as walking down the street with my hands in there and as imagining that as you know I had all these powers, you know like. You know, like Jesus, you know? This drug has a property to it that lets people think they are functioning very well when they're under its influence, which really isn't the case at all. PCP was commercially developed several years ago, and in its early clinical trials as an anesthetic, it was found to be very unpredictable, and therefore the medical people and researchers at that time deemed that drug unsafe to be used in humans. You might take the drug a hundred times and have no trouble with it. And in fact, that's the case with a lot of people. But that hundred and first time, you may cause you serious difficulties. See, I'm crazy. Banana. Wowie. I get fantastic colors. It's fantastic. It's just marvelous. When you smoke PCP, just everything just... Oh, boy. Just goes... We know that anyone who takes a drug like PCP over a long period of time eventually stops their emotional growth. And that's very dangerous because all of us humans have to grow continuously in order to be able to handle our emotional problems, our depressions, our loneliness, our anxiety, and other troubles that we all have. Everything looks beautiful, great. Now... Well, I never thought I'd end up in a mental hospital. But here I am. Basically, I am fairly normal. There are a few things that, that are bothering me. I find myself by myself a lot of times. I just can't seem to be happy. Loneliness is probably the most terrible feeling I've ever had. And I still have it right now. It's like you're in your own little world and you feel like just giving up, doing something stupid, like getting loaded, doing something stupid, like even killing yourself. Loneliness can drive you that. It's, it's driven me that crazy about 
80 percent of the time I must have been by myself while it was loaded on PCP and and it would just it made me feel like I wasn't alone it put me into my my fantasy world and nothing could possibly hurt me when I was in that in that world nothing I was starting to come, come down from the drug I would look down on myself you know and I said look at you you're by yourself there's nobody around you when I smoked PCP I didn't per permit myself to get close to anybody. I kind of shut myself off from a lot of people. Things that make me angry, that I got angry about were uh, things that I couldn't even control. Things I heard on the news, society's laws. When I hear about somebody with money or a politician or someone famous getting busted, then they get a fine. But I can look at me getting busted for the same thing and going to prison. Display to the prisoners of war. Just being young and rebelling against it. That'd be my escape. Go get high on some PCP. My boyfriend and I uh, started smoking angel dust a couple of years ago. It was offered to us and we bought it. And we smoked it a couple of times and enjoyed it. It was something new. I'd been smoking it before I became addicted to it. Well, probably about, I don't know, about six months. After a while, um, it was used more frequently on my boyfriend's part, and he became more dependent on it. I'd seen a lot of friends of mine, you know, that smoked it, and I'd said, you know, I'd never turn out like them, you know. And then I became addicted to it and, you know, I can't get off it. It created a big gap in our relationship. It, um, dust was a challenge to, a challenger. And it was either dust or me, and I wasn't winning. I, I would have to be high to come home and listen to my mom when she'd be drinking, because I couldn't put up with her. When she'd be drinking, she just, I don't know, drives her the wall and she drinks. His mother mostly um, finally realized that her son had a problem, but she, it was too much of a shock for her, so she backed away from it. I'm going to quit smoking Sherman after, you know, today. <laughs> you really believe that? Yeah. You told me that a couple weeks ago. Well, I don't know, sometimes, you know, I just, I just, you know, I smell and I taste. The, I taste Sherman's, you know, I want it, I crave it, and, you know, can't do without it sometimes. And after a while, I went away. I came back and it, it grew stronger, that dependence that he had on it was stronger. When the boss, you know, tells me something, he gives me, like, a few things he tells me to do. Tells me to do a couple things, you know, like uh, he give me four things to do, and I'll do two of them, and I'll forget what the next two was. And then he'll ask me if I did it, and then I'll say yeah, and then he'll say what did you do, and I'll tell him, and I didn't accomplish, you know, what I was supposed to do. Why does he keep you on? What's that? Why does he keep you on? Well, that's why he fired me. If you really thought that you couldn't stop smoking angel dust, that you had a dependence on it, I would just say, go away. Get away from that vicious circle of friends that keep pressuring you, that keep offering it to you and selling it to you, making it so available. Happening? Sermons? Hey, Smiley. What you need, sir? Yeah. I think the primary reason that the drug is sold so openly on the street corners is because that so far the law doesn't seem to make the individual realize that there is a penalty that goes along with this selling of this particular drug. The most dangerous way to take PCP, of course, is to shoot it into the arm. But, but any way it's taken into the body seems to be dangerous. PCP is generally sold on the streets in various forms. It's sold in 
bottles now as liquid on the street. We're seeing more and more liquid coming into play today. Crystal, where it's sold in a little seam or small bindle, the cigarette form. Now that could be a Sherman or a factory cigarette dipped in liquid PCP. And it's also sold as plant material in that same kind of a bindle. The difference between PCP and cocaine crystals, the PCP is generally a yellow, more yellowish color than the uh, cocaine itself, which is white. Angel dust is PCP on plant material. The individuals on some occasions have been actually handed a joint and the individual thinking of getting marijuana ends up with a PCP joint and freaking out. There's all these cars, you know, passing by and I walked out in the street and I said, you know, stop, like, and it's coming back, like cars is coming back, you know, backwards, you know. And the police had pulled me over and they said, you know, what's that smell? And I said, uh, I said, what smell? Smell is one of the best ways of detecting PCP. PCP smells a lot like the uh, presence of ammonia and airplane glue. Uh, when it's in the liquid phase, of course, it also has a strong ether smell. PCP labs generally are being run by people who have no knowledge in the field of chemistry, making possibilities of fire or explosion because they don't know all the safety factors involved in the manufacturing of the phencyclidine. The houses are generally very filthy. The type of product that's coming out of the place has no quality control. We have found several laboratories within the last few months in which the people were actually using PCP as they were manufacturing it and had no concept of what was going on. If you don't know what's going to happen when you take it, because you don't know what the dose is going to be like, why do you keep taking it? Why? Like life. Why not? Do you think the people who make it are concerned with the quality of it? Quality? What do you mean? Suppose they put in something extra or left out something. You'd have something totally different from PCP. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could hurt you. I don't think about that. I just like it. One of the reasons drugs are so available is because there's a lot of money in it. Of course, all drugs can be abused and pose problems for the abuser. Alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, tranquilizers, these are all drugs that are pretty common in our society and can pose problems for the people who use them. Advertising and mass media in our society really reinforces that we can't take care of ourselves. You know, if you have a headache, drop two of these. If you have an upset stomach, take this. Well, how do you think you got that headache in the first place? Loneliness, anger, depression, fear, boredom. The less we pay attention to our bodies and to what's going on, the more we cover it up with PCP and other drugs, the more prolonged the condition becomes. You smoke it most evenings and you're alone most evenings. Mm -hmm. You think there's a connection there? You mean that nobody comes over? Or you don't make an effort to change that? Well, it makes one content. You don't need anybody else. It's called denial. Denial that there's anything wrong. And you have to repress it in order to deny it. What should they do? <laughs> if it's indicated, seek some kind of professional help. A lot of people, even though they are depressed, or are denying their feelings, can channel it, say, into art or into sports, deal with their problems, and be productive also. I've noticed that a lot of times the things that I was the most afraid of, if I could draw it or paint it or do something in clay, it wouldn't be so scary. Like when I did that little statue with the two heads, at the time I was feeling schizophrenic. I mean, feeling like I had these two selves and that they were not at peace at all. Everyone is born with a gift, and the, the job in life is to discover that gift and then develop it or celebrate it. The strongest and most moving stuff comes out of the pain.
it, it literally takes it out of your body. You put it into something else, whether it's a painting or a drawing, and then you can view it with a little bit more kind of understanding and calmness than before when it was internal. You ever feel bad? When you sit around and mope, that's blues. When it's there, you, it seems as if you can't do anything about it, but actually there is something you can do. That's where the most of the depression comes out, when people really write something you can relate to. I had so many problems and so many things going wrong and so many things coming down on me. But I saw this guy, you know, he had no legs and I started going, God, man, I'm really lucky. So the reason why I dance is because it offered me a chance to be creative and it offered me a chance to, to let out steam physically. It doesn't have to be dance. Any kind of physical activity, running, sports, anything. Okay, cut. Cut right there. Okay, cut the music. This, this hand drops. I got rejected a lot of times. I thought to myself, God, man, I'm, I'm never going to meet anybody. You know, nobody loves me. So I think the best thing for people that are lonely to do is don't keep thinking about it. Think about what you can do to help others. And other people will see that. And they'll be attracted towards you. Just look at my legs. You want to like this? No, 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 I don't want to do that. That's it. That's it. Like that. I took Coach for five times, high 24 hours a day. I wanted to leave him so many times. I tried to get him, you know, because he was more strung out on it than I was. And I wanted him off of it so bad. I didn't leave him. Why didn't you leave him? I loved him. And, you know, I didn't want to live without him. I wanted to better him. She does love you a lot. No, she wants to help me. Love <laughs> made my whole world. You know, made me want to live, make something, you know, myself. Okay. Having babies isn't really the only way to show your love. Setting goals, make something out of yourself. You need to be an actress, huh? I think drugs have a lot to do with your growing up. You can't grow up when you're high. I have a lot more to live for. I have a lot more anxieties, more goals. Why would I choose love over getting high? Because love is everything, you know. You gotta have love. You gotta love yourself to love anybody else. You know? How can you love yourself when you don't even know who you are? How would I advise them? I just tell them, you know, look at yourself. I just love it. your head feel? Fine. Huh. Go ahead. Give me, give me some more descriptions. Give me okay. A, describe for me. Go. Describe how, you're, how you feel. But what do you mean? How do you feel? Describe how you feel, not just fine. But... I feel fine. This isn't doing it. Can you give me more, more description? Uh, what? It's rather embarrassing, but, uh, when you're loaded, I don't really feel that I was doing that. I feel that I'm mentally alert. I'm surprised and a bit shocked. Just uh, the way I looked like uh, somebody down on Skid Row or in, a, in an institution or something. I'm fine. I'm just sitting here watching television. Here I go. 
So people would... Uh... Why do you think people smoke PC? What? Say the alphabet. A, B, C, D, what? What was the question? <laughs> That's the trouble with it. You see? PCP is so strange. It's fascinating. That's what... That's what... Much fun. You having fun now? Huh? Are you having fun now? Oh, yeah. What do you think about when you're high? What do I think about when I'm high? Oh, just glorious things. Happy. Mary Tyler Moore. Joyful, happy, uh, heavenly things, good, good things. You ever think about the same things when you're not high? Huh? You ever think about those same things when you're not high? Uh-uh. Why not? What was the question? Do you ever think about happy things when you're not high? We phrase it. Do you ever feel good when you're not high on PCP? Do I ever feel good? When you're not high on PCP. Do it again. Do you ever feel good when you're not on PCP? Do I ever feel good when I'm not on PCP? Oh, yeah. What makes you feel good? PCP. What else? Uh, What else? Black? <laughs> I don't know. Don't give up. Um, even though you feel like killing yourself at times, don't don't give up. Um, keep going. There's, there's, there's something. happy and, and that's a balance of love and work. Okay, Jack, control yourself. Control yourself, Jack. Jack, control yourself. You have to control yourself. Control yourself. Control yourself. Drill down to you have to see how funny I am. Huh. Isn't it funny? <laughs> 